to Rotec today and I'm going to be finding out more about this Nakamura Tome MX100 machine and how this machine is working for this business. But first, let me give you the specification. The Nakamura Tome MX100, a multitasking machine. It's got a twin spindle, single turret with a B-axis milling head, Capto C4 tooling, 48 tool changer carousel, but there's an option for 72 tools, 12,000 RPM spindle speed, Renishaw tooling and part probe, Fanuc NT Smart X, can bar feed up to 50 mil in diameter, and there's one meter between the spindles. We're going to see inside the machine in just a few moments, but why did you buy this machine? So we bought the, the MX100 because we recognized um, from the for sort of very early on that this machine was the sort of next step for us. And, um, and with the, the, so in light of the, the current situation that we've just had um, with uh, obviously the, the, what, the global pandemic, um, the, some of the level of work that we were doing and some of the parts that we were, we were getting, um, we, we quickly identified that this machine was, uh, both because of its flexibility and its functionality, was the, the perfect machine to, to take our, our vision to the next step. Going into the machine, what's the benefits of the B-axis? So having the, the B-axis head, um, again, it, uh, it's something we're used to on the NTRX 300s, and having the, the full five-axis uh, simultaneous capabilities that we, can, that we can do on this is, um, with the addition of the lower turret, is, um, is just, again, just enhances our, our, our flexibility and functionality. And you've got through spindle coolant on that Through spindle coolant on that, yeah. And then you've got driven tooling on the turret Driven too. tools on all the stations on the lower turret, yeah. I see you've got the Renishaw probing there. It's not there at the moment, but what are you going to do with this? Yeah, so we decided um, that we were going to retrofit the Renishaw probing system. Um, we've got it on all of our Nakamura NTRX 300s, and um, we decided uh, to, to, to further standardise the, the bits of kit that we've got. We, we needed to have it on this machine simply. And what was the turnaround time from order because it's an interesting story this one yeah so um, this machine was probably one of our quickest um, decisions that we've uh, made from a management point of view um, ever um, <laughs> so we I think we decided we were going to purchase we recognized we needed to purchase a new machine on the Wednesday um, we were very quickly on the phone to to the to the guys at um, to ETG um, they told us they had one in stock waiting to go um, we managed to get the deal nailed on the Thursday um, we started, so we had the Friday as a day to, to sort of um, work out how we were going to do it logistically with uh, the, the various people we had to put in place, uh, the, the machine installers, uh, Hydrofeed, um, the ETG engineers, and then the, the installation started on the Saturday, um, and uh, I think the machine was up and running either on the Sunday, meet, Sunday evening or first thing on the Monday morning on some ventilator parts. What a story. That is just mind-blowing, really, when you think about it. Now. Is it opening up capacity or what's the angle here? So the angle with the MX100 is that it's, uh, it's, it's a new type of machine for us. It kind of takes the essence of the, of the NTRX 300 um, and mixes that with um, the philosophy behind the, the Nakamura uh, Tome uh, NTY3s. And it's sort of a brilliant hybrid between the two machines um, because you have the, the flexibility of an NTRX 300 with, with the axis head. Um, but you also have the, the rapid uh, production-based um, philosophy behind the machine that you'd get with the likes of uh, a Nakamura NTY3. Um, so we found that we can make some highly complicated parts, um, some milled parts, um, bar, feed, bar fed from the, from the hydrofeed bar fed, similar to, to this one here, um, but actually um, to make them in a, in a sort of very efficient and productive way. Now that isn't a square part, is it? So this is one of the parts that we that we made um, through the four ventilators. Um, so this uh, part would we would have traditionally made on a either a milling machine or a uh, an NTRX 300. Um, but we when obviously we had the the addition of having the MX 100. We found that um, this part was the the per perfectly suited part to this machine. Um, so uh, we, we it took us a few days to set it up. So I think all things considered, um, it's, a, it's a completely new material for us on a, on a new machine um, with a completely new setup. And uh, yeah, I think we've, it's been a, a learning experience for us. It's clearly been a success for you. So let's get into the machine. Let's start at the bar loader. Yeah, so we decided on this machine that we, we wanted to go for a, a hydrofeed bar loader. Um, we've got it on a number of our machines now. Um, we've got it on most of them, actually. And we find that the, the hydrofeed uh, bar, bar loader is, is a brilliant, uh, simple setup. Um, and as I said, we've got the, the same model of, 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 uh, of bar loader on all of them. So it's a FANUC base in the control, yeah. so it looks very advanced. Yes, yeah, so we've got the, the FANUC uh, NT SmartX control on here from Nakamura. 
Um, it's a brilliant control. Again, it's something we're, we're really used to now. We've got it on, I think, four or five of our machines. And there's some brilliant uh, conversational programming uh, functionality on there. So as you can see here, this is our productivity graph. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's almost all green, um, which, is, which is good. And it's what we like to see because it just means that we really are sort of uh, using these machines as productively as possible. And we really are trying to sort of push them to their limits. Your vision here is automation. So you've got the parts catcher or parts unloader, is that right? Yeah, so we've got the, the part unloader on the, on the sub spindle that can, that can unload from the sub. Um, so it all sort of works together as a machining cell. We've got the bar feed on the one side, we've got the, the Renishaw probing it on, on, in the middle, and, uh, and the parts unloader on the other side unloading the parts 24-7. Um, so what's your ultimate aim here then at Rotec? The, the ultimate aim at Rotec is to, for, for full automation, uh, lights out machining, and this machine takes that one step further. So it's even got a, a lights out function where I think after five minutes of, of no interaction, all the lights and the screen completely turn off, which just uh, further sort of um, reassures us that it's, it is the right machine for us and it fits perfectly with our philosophy.